50 years ago, Dolores Hart was at the top of her game, appearing alongside Anthony Quinn, Robert Wagner, Montgomery Cliff. Well, well, I wanted to be with you. And not only here, but I want you with us on the road, wherever we go. They don't need me. And you don't need me. You're going to the top, Deke, and you're going alone. Why Dolores Hart left Hollywood? Hart was compared to Grace Kelly during her time in the spotlight, and she worked with a number of leading men, including Marlon Brando and Elvis Presley, who shared his first on-screen kiss with Hart in the 1957 film Loving You. A higher force, however, stepped in and saved the day. At the age of 25, she left the bright lights of Hollywood for a peaceful life at a monastery in Bethlehem, Connecticut. So why did she decide to leave Hollywood at such a young age? We're going to find out. Hello friends, welcome to Fresh Story Media. Here we try to cover the latest news and human interest stories, as well as try to make this world a better place every single day by sharing goodness among you. Let's get started. God gave me an awful lot, very fast. And the thought came to me, I wonder if I should give back something. She was nicknamed the next Grace Kelly because of her long blonde hair and big blue eyes. A few years later, when she disappeared from the spotlight, rumors circulated that she had left Hollywood after getting the icon's love child, despite the fact that she never dated the heartthrob. Nothing could have been further from the fact. Mother Dolores Hart, 80, says from her office at the Abbey of Regina Lottie's, a Benedictine monastery and working farm in Bethlehem, Connecticut, more than five decades later. I often wonder why the Lord gave me such an opportunity to audition for Elvis. There were so many of us in line that day. And I just can't believe that I got the part. Her story was the subject of an Oscar-nominated short film, God is the Bigger Elvis, which was released in 2012. These days, the actress is a Roman Catholic nun in a monastery, where she looks after the community and her hens, cows, llamas, and her African gray parrot, Beau. Mother Dolores also has prayer meetings with her sisters seven times a day and once at night. Stability is one of the significant factors of the rules of St. Benedict. She says, admitting it was also what attracted her to becoming a nun in the first place, given her difficult childhood, in which she was shuttled back and forth between Los Angeles and Illinois. My parents split and remarried three times, she explains dryly. But it wasn't an easy chance for the priors, who had to secretly purge all of her belongings, fur coats, jewels, and dresses, when she was 24 years old in 1963. It was really sad, like what purgatory may be like, she says with a laugh. I couldn't talk to the press, not even my mother, but they had to make sure I was for real. She wouldn't take a nun's habit for at least another year after joining the monastery and becoming a postulant. That meant she had to cut her golden shoulder-length curls. The very attribute that helped her win a studio contract with Paramount. When I was tiny, my great grandma used to say to me as she would brush her hair, Don't ever cut your hair, says Mother Dolores, recalling the time she refused to chop her waist grazing lengths for the role as a young aristocratic woman who leaves her family to become a nun in the 1961 historical drama Francis of Assisi. Hart requested that her hair be greased and wear a wig to imitate the climactic ritual scene, much to the chagrin of the filmmakers. I offer thee, O Lord, my renunciation. You raise from within me every trace of vanity. I had a voice. I will have it now only for prayer. I had a heart. I will have it now only to throb at thy teachings. At the time, I just couldn't do that for a movie, it had to be for something real. Of course that was back when good looks were frequently mistaken for movie star potential before professional acting skills were even considered. Dolores said she didn't want anything to do with nuns when a friend suggested she recuperate for a few days in the silence of an abbey. Dolores went because her friend persisted. Something drew her there, and she regularly returned, even discussing a potential vocation with the then abbess, who advised her to return and continue acting because she was too young. The abbess said to me in 1959 when I asked her, do you think I'm material for Regina Laudis? And she said, you go back and do your movie thing and get it out of your system. And she was very wise because I was too young and I was in some sort of a romance with the idea. I wasn't really ready for it. A letter from Regina Lottes arrived a few years later, just as Dolores was getting ready to marry in an Edith head gown. 
According to the letter, if she was still thinking about joining the convent, it was a good time to do so. Dolores followed in her footsteps. She said goodbye to the glitz, glitter, and handsome co-stars. She abandoned her fiancé, Don Robinson, a devout Catholic architect who had already drawn up designs for their future home. She left behind everything that everyone is supposed to want. She had it all, in a sense, and she left it all behind. I never felt I was leaving anything that I was given. The Abbey was like a grace of God that just entered my life in a way that was totally unexpected. And God was the vehicle. He was the bigger Elvis. Dolores Hart's leave-taking is one of the best decisions ever taken by anybody at any point in history. She didn't die of an overdose, nor did she end up on the love boat, nor did she persevere through the facelift years, deathly career retrospectives, or animal caretaking of the elder Hollywood stateswoman. Seeing Dolores' face now is like seeing what life is really like. She hasn't had the cosmetic surgery, plumping or hair foaming that her peers her age have. She is as exquisite as a raw piece of granite, having been gently weathered by time and sacrifice. It has been um, a very wonderful life, and I have learned so much about, I guess, myself and about life itself. You don't enter a monastery not to look at life. You enter the monastery to understand life at its depth. Dolores played Claire in Michael Curdy's Francis of Assisi in 1961, which was a happy coincidence. Claire's initiation is brought to mind by the video of Dolores' beautiful hair being ritually cut off. God is the Bigger Elvis also gives us a fascinating look at the Regina Lottie's sisters, who deserve praise for allowing cameras into their lives. I imagine being filmed will be the very last thing on a cloistered nun's mind. When I see them, all I can think about is how grateful I am for their tremendous sacrifice. Monks and nuns seem to bear the burden of prayer for the rest of us, who are often too busy to consider God. They're like a spiritual rainforest, but with a lot more hardship and hardship. The nuns at Regina Lottie's run a working farm, look after guests, and spend a lot of time praying. Dolores was, in a sense, the real deal, natural beauty, and talent who passed up Hollywood for a much bigger reward. She says she left the Hollywood spotlight for a higher calling. I was in love with God. Not your typical Hollywood ending, but a love story nonetheless. It's not shocking that this documentary didn't win the Oscar for Best Documentary Feature. This is not the kind of story that Hollywood would enjoy or take seriously. The conclusion of Dolores Hart's story refutes all of the reports about itself that the so-called Dream Factory likes to say. Life has a bigger meaning than you think it does. There's more to be learned. Every human being has a mission. Everyone you meet has a purpose. And you can't just stop with making movies as the end all and be all. Don Robinson, on the other hand, must have a place in the Fellowship of Saints. He would visit Dolores for the rest of his life because he could never get over her. In the film, he is seen paying a visit to Dolores. They seem to be a perfect elderly married couple, but she is dressed in religious garb and he refers to her as Mother. Robinson, who died after the film was completed, would certainly be a patron saint of unselfish love. From young convert to film starlet to religious figure, Dolores Hart's life has been the stuff of modern-day hagiography, a story destined to inspire more film adaptations in the future. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to like the video. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss the amazing content that we publish every day.